Hello, hello, and blessings to you on this wonderfully exciting on passive day. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Mufara joined a webinar, and during that, he spoke about attending an event in Israel, and he spoke about a meeting with on passive management in India. My intention here is to expand on Mr. Mufara's thoughts and then present a clip taken from the webinar because nobody can quite say it like he does. So, I guess the theme for this is his motivation for creating on passive the business model the way he did. Because, throughout the meeting, one common theme continued to present itself in a singular question. Why do you do this? As context, the staff was asking the question regarding the extra benefits they get from on passive. Um, Benefits over and above those provided by any other company. Specifically, things like travel, the ability to get bonuses and loans, and a lot more stuff. Normally, a company provides stuff like pay and maybe some insurance, you know, the regular stuff, taxes, benefits, as usual, and what have you. But On Passive has a much longer list of perks and benefits than any other company's ever been able to give. So, even more than that, the workers that are really moving things, you know, the shakers and movers, the ones with above average performance, they can even get bonuses. Some of them can even get pay increase percentages, a fixed percentage, compounded every month. How many companies do you know of that give a percentage as a raise or a salary increase? A percentage, right? Compounded every month, forever, as long as you work for them. I don't know of any. Anyway, in this light, you can probably understand why some of the employees were checking his motive by asking him, why do you do that? Because the whole philosophy is seen as crazy, you know, insane by other companies. And the same question could be used in context of wealth. The thinking is, with its enormity, with the technology, the sophistication and resources commanded by On Passive, Mr. Mufar could potentially be universally wealthy, perhaps a trillionaire. I mean, the opportunity to keep this immense wealth is there and his for the taking. But he didn't and he hasn't. And the question becomes why. In his own words, quote, whatever you do in life, you do it for a cause, for a reason. You have a motive. You have something that motivates you. I'm not motivated by money, unquote. The fact is, Mr. Mufara simply does not need on passive to maintain his lifestyle. It's no secret the man is set. And it's that simple. So, accumulation of wealth is not the motivating factor. In fact, he has clearly said that financial motivation could in no way provide the passion that's required to work as hard as he does. That passion comes from a mission to positively impact others and to honor the commitment to those that have put their faith in him. And that means the overreaching motivation for on passive is far, far behind his personal scope. A lot bigger than a single person, family, or group. And as many have seen, that drive is massive. And because the whole thing is so much bigger than one person or one family or one group or even the founder base, it's much more rewarding and fulfilling. So no, it's not typical. Most businesses want the easiest, simplest way to get the job done for the least amount of time and money and the biggest gain. In other words, they want the most they can get out of it in dollars or money and the least amount of time and resources so they get the best ROI, the return on investment, right? And like Mr. Mufar says, they want to put a dollar or a day in and they want to get 70 out. Well, they want to get the most for the least without considering value. In on passive, it's completely different. That's not how we do things. Dollar in per dollar out is not the criteria for measuring our success in on passive. Instead, we're looking at providing the most value and the cost in dollars very seldom enters that equation. The motivating questions are, what's the most value we can provide and how much impact can we make on humanity? So, Mr. Mufara is saying, regardless of the cost, how long it takes in terms of time, money, and energy or effort, just doesn't matter that much at all. What matters is the value we produce to the maximum positive impact of the world on humanity. Bringing the idea full circle, Mr. Mufar goes on to say that nobody can keep us from our wealth and nobody can take the wealth from us and there's always going to be enough. Again, 
Like he says in the clip, and I quote, no matter how much you take, he takes, she takes, I take, it doesn't matter. There's enough abundance and prosperity for all of us, unquote. The big difference with that wealth, like it is with so many other things and so many other systems, whether it's, you know, food or water or medicine or whatever, is the distribution. You've heard me talk about this before when I'm on my decentralization soapbox. You see, the fairness of delivery through any system is affected by the ebb and flow of its distribution. Until on passive, I have never seen, never experienced in my 30 years of management, a fair, much less benevolent system of distribution for anything man-made. And topping the worst of the worst, and by that I mean the most corrupt, are government and big pharma. But with on passive, we can do something about it. At its core, on passive is about creating value in such a massive amount that its byproduct is wealth. And that wealth, billions, eventually trillions of dollars, will be funneled through a net of a million or so founders and billions of customers and resellers across the globe, touching every culture on earth for many, many years to come. Through this, Mr. Mufara has created a system that wins with people. And we will win big together in a way that's much more fulfilling and provides a much greater, benevolent, generous, compassionate impact. And that's the reason that we're so strong about our passion. Because there is no downside to what Mr. Mufara has created in what he calls a winning game. And those who have joined or will join are all going to win together. And part of that beauty is that we don't have to worry about the mechanics. We don't have to worry about how it's being done. We can leave that for Mr. Mufar and his teams. Yeah, we'll just leave that to them, right? We just have to decide to join, then smile, and expand the dream. You know, Mr. Mufar is right. We have this one life right now, and it's short. Don't settle for less than the best. Don't settle for mediocrity or the silly stuff. We can expand our thinking to include confidently big, bold dreams and be a part of a mission that's greater than ourselves. You know a little bit about psychology. And so you know there are a lot of smart people that say success is, jeez, well, it's all about showing up. So by just showing up here, you're at the right place at the right time. So you've already created the lion's share of your success. Once you're in, your success is just a matter of time. And that success is going to be compounded as a result of being with the right people and having a clean, clear purpose. In this, each of us are significant. It doesn't matter how much or how little you accomplish, only that you do accomplish something, only that you move ahead. So whether you move ahead because of what you do or because of what is done for you doesn't matter. You will still move ahead and you will still gain success in greater and greater increments. And I'm telling you, as a founder or a reseller, 95% of what you achieve will not be from what you do. It'll be from the efforts of on passive. And this is to say that you are winning because you're with the right crowd, in the right vehicle, on the right track, and you're moving in the right direction. And that vehicle track and direction is already clean and moving. Listen. According to expert predictions on passive will, not might, not may, it will have the greatest impact on humanity of any company. This prediction is based on our projected volume and the potential market cap of about 5 billion people. And yes, we'll attain unicorn status within weeks after opening to the public. Even now in pre-launch, the impact for good on passive is making already is far beyond a great many of the large companies and no company in history has ever been lined up so as to impact humanity like we will. Like Mr. Mufara says, it's mind boggling to have a company that hasn't even opened its doors with nearly a million customers already lined up and ready to start paying the subscription. Now, please listen to this short clip of Mr. Mufara saying a lot of this in his own words in a way that you can understand and enjoy. Look at you here. Uh, it's a beautiful crowd. Uh, we were having, uh, I, I think one common thing, uh, one of the lessons today that early in the morning we were having a, a meeting with the uh, old management uh, in India uh, for on passive and as I said the meeting in Israel and two different classes 
One is staff and one founders, but they had the same question. Why do you do this? So the staff is as a reaction for uh, the extra benefits that we give them, like no other company would give them. The travel, the things that we finalized, uh, the ability to get bonuses, loans, you name it, okay? No company's done that. So they give the salary, the insurance, the regular, the taxes, the benefits, the saving, as usual, but on passive, then a bigger list we go, what no other company would ever do. Example, because uh, uh, Susie McRae has been uh, in the HR uh, management uh, for a while and she knows, uh, have you seen a, a, a company structure where they pay you a hike or a salary increase every month, forever in your life, a percentage and it's compounded. So typically you get an annual hike, a couple of pennies here and there, some people stay years before they see any increase in their salary. Six months, I've seen the, the shortest term maybe, but for the most part, it's a year plus and a little bit. So they get that in on passive, that's the usual, but also what on passive for the workers and the movers and the shakers, the, those the, who, who give us more than average performance, we give them a percentage, a, a fixed percent every month. So you get 1000, let's say example this month, 2% next month, compounded, 2%. So my salary would never be the same. So that's why they were asking, why do you do that? When And, and that conversation was a little bit longer. Same thing with Israel. Like they said, you could have been the richest man. You have the opportunity to keep wealth. I heard Andy was explaining about the three and we could do that and stop right there. But it's possible to scrape a little bit more and share with more people that abundance and that uh, prosperity. Uh, so it got me thinking, and why do I do this? Whatever you do in life, you do it for a cause, for a reason. You have a motive. You have a, a, something that motivates you. I am not motivated by money. It happened that they just finished a dinner, and I use the analogy. They were just wrapping up the dinner, very nice, and I said, would you be interested in listening to more food now? Or do you want to like consume more food? The answer is like, they're like stuffed. If we talked an hour earlier, they would have been hungry. All they want to talk about food is food. And the same thing. So I'm not hungry for money or, or that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine. Or I don't need to go through on passive to be able to maintain the lifestyle I wish to have. And it's that simple. So my drive is not money. In fact, if I am driven by money, I wouldn't have the energy, the passion to work seven days a week, 365 days a year, almost the slowest day in my life, like 14, 18 hours. Okay, some days it, it connects to the next day with all the, obviously it's not easy. It's, you know, it can get frustrating sometimes. Uh, but when you're on a mission to make an impact on others and they hold you accountable or they have faith and hope and trust in you. They put their entire faith in you. So it's above and beyond my personal scope. It, it is way bigger than what about her or him or that family that can, can count on me. It's shameful for me uh, to, to, to let them down or disappoint them. So the drive is massive. I can give it my life. Uh, and, and it's much more rewarding and fulfilling than just like piling uh, that wealth in one bank account. It's to me, it's tasteless. It's, uh, it's, it, in fact, I would probably feel bad because I know it's at the expense of somebody. Somebody has to pay for that, the typical business uh, structure. And as I often say, most businesses, what they do, it, this is, this is ABC business. Okay. The least amount of money, the easier, simplest way to get the task done the fastest amount of time or the least amount of time. So less in and the most they can get out of it in dollars or money called or, uh, ROI, return on investment. They want to put a dollar or, or, or a day, they want to get 70 in return. They want to get the most. It's completely different. That's not the measure. That's not the criteria and on passive. The way we look at things, What's the most value we can provide? 
how much impact can we make on humanity? Regardless of the cost, how long it takes, the sacrifice or the, the energy or the effort, doesn't matter. What matters is how much value can we provide? And to complete the uh, concept here, I'm very convinced that nobody will take away from my health, uh, wealth, nobody. You're gonna have enough, there is enough wealth for all of us. No matter how much you take, she takes, they take, I take, doesn't matter. There's enough abundance and prosperity for all of us. The difference is the distribution of that wealth, how it fluctuates and the fairness of that distribution. Up until now, I don't know any way that is fair. Not, a, not, not in the church industry, it's not even fair, okay? As close as it can get to God is corrupted, okay? <laughs> so it's never fair. And uh, governments, you tell me about it, okay? So it's not fair. And we can do something about it. I want to win with people. It's more fulfilling. It's more impactful. And that's why we're so strong about our passion. We're very, very, uh, you know, determined that this is a winning game. We're going to win together, uh, at least those who decided to win with us. If you decided to come and win, don't worry about the mechanics. I believe success with people or in the people business, 80% psychology, 20% mechanics. Leave the mechanics for us. You just make a decision, put a big smile. As Marina was talking, increase, expand your thinking and your dream. It's one life, it's short. Don't settle for mediocrity or silly stuff. Set your life for big, big, bold dreams and go for it. Even if you die halfway, you're going to die on a mission, on something honorable. All right? It's not worth it to, to do silly stuff. Okay? Uh, so go for it. Go, go big and loud and huge. Aim for the moon. If you fail or if you miss, you land among the stars. There's no losing if you're on a big mission. If you achieved nothing, just being on the right journey, on the right track, it's already fulfilling. Somebody will finish. So psychology meaning you make a decision, you have a proper positive attitude, a good perspective about life. If you're with us, they say success is all about showing. It's some people say 50% of success, 75%. It doesn't matter how much percent, but if you're showing up, at the right place, like now, at the right time, it's definitely a big chunk of your success. It's only a matter of time. You don't want to be too busy and consumed and energy, a lot of noise on the right, on the wrong direction, because you're never going to get there and you're going to hurt yourself and may hurt more people. If you're at the right track, on the right track, with the right people, with a clean purpose, no matter how much you accomplish, you are winning because you're on the right track. The positioning, the direction is already clean. And uh, to, to convey to Andy's uh, coverage about the pay structure, uh, very simple. On passive, according to experts, it will be not possibly or according to the, to, the, to the volume and to the potential market we have. The market cap is 5 billion people, 5,000 million people. It's a lot of people. And it's going to be difficult to feed all of them. So uh, <laughs> anyway, but together we can. Uh, so due to that, they predict that OnPassive will be the biggest company that the industry ever witnessed. You got Tesla, you got uh, SpaceX, you got uh, Apple, $2 trillion. Big. That's not what they meant. They're talking about the impact of on passive. Even if we don't have a budget or cash flow of uh, or assets for $2 trillion. That's a lot of billions, okay? Uh, the impact that on passive is making already is far beyond any other company we've seen. And uh, one thing I disagree with them, they said in the industry, I, I disagree. 
the key word is not the industry in any sector is in any industry i haven't seen a company that is lined up to make such an impact globally on humanity and leave a clean legacy not to one not to two not to one family but to all of us and like Annie said it's, a, it's we're the one percent we're three quarters of a million now one more quarter will be a million a million founders it's mind-boggling to have a company didn't open doors for you know uh retail or collecting money and, and and payments that has near or nearly one million customers lining up saying this is my card charge me i'm in but the opportunity will be gone soon once the door is open publicly, the founder's position is closed to newcomers and existing founders take on an elite status. In a universe of challenging choices, on passive is the clear and easy choice. So join with us right now. Get back with the founder that invited you and sign up in that team. Otherwise, I'd love for you to join with me, join our team, and I ask you to do it. Just click in the link in the description box below. And I thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you doing that. And just know that we wish only the best for you and yours and for your entire future.